be starting with the spiritual wisdom. Before, before starting the spiritual wisdom, today's class, so my sincere pranams to my beloved Guruji, Brahmanshi Patriji, also my sincere pranams to Mahatar Babaji and all the astral masters in the universe. So my sincere pranams and thanks to all the masters. So my dear friends, today the spiritual part of spiritual wisdom, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga. Every one of you definitely will be knowing who is Patanjali. Patanjali is the Maharshi who descended to the earth planet way back about 5000 years ago and he laid down the great principles. In fact, to speak, whenever we speak about yoga, only the one person, only one and only the person we will all will be remembering is none other than Patanjali, Patanjali Maharshi. Okay. So he is the great Maharshi who was born to the earth planet, of course. And he has given this 5,000 years ago, he has given it this eternal wisdom. Eternal wisdom, my dear friends. So this eternal wisdom is given to the earth, you know, earth planet and humanity. And of course, the same thing is pursuing and continuing throughout the centuries, throughout the thousands of years till now, my dear friends. But many of us will be confused. Whenever we say Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, we always think yoga means yoga asnas, isn't it? Most of us. What we try to understand is, we will always try to understand, most of us, whenever we say yoga, yoga means yoga asnas. Friends, try to understand, yoga and yoga asnas are not same. Okay, yoga asnas is the part of the yoga. Okay, what is the word meaning of yoga? Let's understand before going to the subject. Yoga means, yoga means union. What is the meaning? Union, right? So the union of what? Union of several things, okay, several things. So the union, union of two different things getting together, that's called union, isn't it? So what is that going to be union now? So my breath is going to be getting united with my mind. That means mind and breath, just, just they are going to merge each other, okay? So that's what, so the mind and breath, right? So these two are getting merged, they are getting union, okay? They are becoming one. So whenever two things join together, they become one, isn't it? So the same way, my breath and mind, my breath and thoughts getting together, okay? They become one, okay? That's, that's also one kind of union. And also, I can say that my, especially my mind, you know, getting merged with the, my soul consciousness. It means there's no question of mind. Mind is just, you know, mind is going to be dropped off and it's going to be disappearing and getting, uh, getting union with my own soul consciousness. That means uni uni union of my mind with the soul consciousness is also called as a yoga union. That's also one union, isn't it? So that's why it's also called yoga. Yoga means what? The unification of your mind with your soul consciousness. And the mind is, mind is going to be disappeared. Mind is going to be dissolved. It's going to be dropped off. So that is called yoga. Friends, this is yoga. This is an ex exact meaning of, meaning of yoga. Okay, so meaning of yoga is not yogasnas, not the pranayama, not the kusti, not the not not a kusti or not physical exercises, my dear friends. We need to understand this. First of all, this yoga, yoga is yoga. Yoga became popular across the world. So due to the efforts of our beloved Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he has proposed to the all 190 more than 190 countries accepted in order to propose June 21st as a International Yoga Day. So with which everybody, every one of us came to know about the, this particular yoga. Otherwise, the India Sanatana Dharma knows very well about this yoga and yoga, the effectiveness of yoga, efficiency of yoga, the greatness of yoga and the sanctity of yoga, my dear friends. But the other countries were not knowing much, but with the introduction of this International Yoga Day, all the countries came to know. Now, the other countries are practicing more than the India, my dear friends. More than India, they are practicing, they are researching, they are doing, going depth into the yoga, right? So they are coming out with the many, many research findings, my dear friends, okay? So that is why, so that's how the yoga has become popular now. So let's understand, yoga means not yoga asnas. First thing I want to clarify, okay? Yoga means unification of your mind with the soul consciousness. That is called yoga. The word is defined as yoga, right? So it's a union. Now, friends, what happens is why we need to study this uh, first of all this patanjali ashtanga yoga patanjali ashtanga yoga is defined as eight steps okay why we need to study this 
So the Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, over study, over understand, over follow, pursue, what happens is you become a realized person. You become an enlightened person. You get a you get the liberation. You get the moksha. You get the mukti. You become an infinite soul. You become a, you get the samadhi stiti, my dear friends. So this is the great this is a great result of the Patanj pursuing the Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, understanding the Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, and the once you understand, once you practice in your daily life, then you become a enlightened master at the end of you know all the steps, eight steps. When we understand today. Today, every step we are going to understand in a deeper perspective. So, by the end of by understanding these eight steps, if why anyone pursue these five eight steps and practice in the real reality, then you become a great master, you become an enlightened master. You get the liberation without fail, my dear friends. So that's why. So, since it is so essential for every human life in order to get the mukti or moksha for every human life. See what happens if I get a mukti, if I get a moksha. My dear friends, so one thing you need to understand, the purpose of human life is whenever we come to the earth planet, we lead our life and then we depart. Okay. So there's a great statement by Shakespeare. So all the whole world is a, all the world is a stage. We are all the mere actors. We stuck and few and we, we do our duty and depart. Okay. So the great statement coined by the great Shakespeare. Shakespeare is a great poet. All of us know, my dear friends, he's an English poet. Okay. So what he said is, the, all the world is a stage, we are the mere actors, we stuck and few, and then we do our part and we depart. Okay. So everybody, everybody will be doing like this. In the throughout the throughout the life, we do something, we are the actors, we do on the stage, you know, we act, we act so nicely. At the end of the life, we need to depart from here. So whenever you are departing, every time you are coming here onto the earth planet and then departing, it means there is a lot of rebirths are happening, a lot of reincarnation, reincarnation is happening. So how do you come out of this reincarnation? Why do I need to come out of the reincarnation? Friend, if somebody studying 12th standard, he has to go to the degree. After degree passed, you know, he has to go to the, the so-called masters. After master, he has to go to the PhD. Isn't it? Similarly, so as a human being, once you born here, how many lives you will take? You take approximately 350 to 400 lives in order to become an enlightened master. Isn't it? So in that case, how can you increase these 400 lives? An average, I'm telling, average, it takes about 350 to 400 lives in order to get in order to get the enlightenment for every just born soul. I'm telling you, just born soul from the Paripurnatma, from the uh, from the God Almighty, you can say, whenever a just born soul is born into the universe, the the soul will take so many life journeys and then it get enlightened after the 350 to 400 lives. But if you don't pursue the, if you don't pursue properly on this earth planet, if you keep doing mistakes, if you keep doing all so many negative karmas all the times, so what happened? This four four hundred gen four hundred lives become a thousand lives, my dear friends. Even thousand lives also you will not be able to get the enlightenment. That is why what happened is by knowing all this in order to give liberation, the facility or a kind of a education. Uh, regarding the enlightenment, regarding the you know so called the liberation or a mukti moksha, how to get moksha by, by every, for every in just born soul to the the developed souls like you know matured souls, whichever the souls are going through so many lives, how to get the enlightenment in order to give the education about enlightenment, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga has been designed and devised and presented to the whole humankind by Great Maharshi Patanjali Maharshi. Right, so friends, that is why it is very very important for all of us in order to get the enlightenment in one life or other life. We must go through this Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, understand when, and follow it practically. Experience practically, you follow that. Definitely, you will become a enlightened master by you know in one or other life, my dear friends. Right. So what? So that means this Patanjali Yoga. Patanjali Yoga is going to all the Ashtanga Yoga, eight steps is going to define the complete spiritual science, my dear friends. Complete Adhyatmic Shastra, Dhyana Shastra, Atma Gyana Shastra. So it is going to define end to end, my dear friends. End to end, the complete details are given to you. By, by understanding this Patanjali, so by understanding, by experiencing this Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, by getting enlightened, I become an enlightened master at the, you know, in one or other life. By going through, by experiencing, by practically putting into the practice of this Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, what are the benefits, my dear friends? Friends, you will be able to 
get a lot of answers for all your unanswered questions. Many of us, you know, we have the questions, who am I? From where, where, from, where from I come? Where do I go back? Right? So before birth, where I was? After the death, where I will be? And what is the purpose of my life? And why do I suffer with this so, so many problems? So what are the great difficulties I'm undergoing? So my so my kids are not you know cooperating with me, and I'm getting quite often some losses in my business, right? I get I so this kind of so many so many questions, so many unanswered questions will be taunting on you. It will be so it will be haunting you in your mind, and you'll be suffering, my dear friends. So mentally you'll be suffering, so taking a lot of suffering in your in your mind because you don't have the proper wisdom with you. You are not an enlightened master. You never did meditation. You never followed the Patvata Nirashtama Yoga. You never know what is what is the real wisdom, isn't it? So as you don't know what will happen, these questions are bothering you so much, so much. And finally, what will happen? You get into the diseases, my dear friends. You get into a lot of diseases and your own. So once you get into any, any kind of a dreadful disease, like cancer, diabetes, and a BP, because of so many issues you are facing on this planet, because of lack of your spiritual wisdom, lack of the real wisdom, lack of the truth, lack of knowing your own true self, what will happen is you get into a lot of difficulties and diseases, then finally you waste the entire one life. One complete life will go will go away, you lose the great opportunity of this current life within, within your own hands. It is very much there right now. You lose the opportunity of spending this life in a judicious way, my dear friends. That is why it's very important, very imperative and very uh, compulsory, mandatory that one must understand this Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga. So let's understand this Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga. Friends, what is Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga? It is of combination of eight steps he has defined. Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga. What are those eight steps? The first one is whenever we start with the, the Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, my dear friends, the first one what it starts is so the uh, uh, asana, right? So first thing is asana, then pranayama comes, then pra. So first actually the, in the order of Patanjali, there are the, the before the asana starts about yama nema is there, right? Yama niyama. Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So these are the eight steps the, as per the Patanjali Maharshi. Try to, try to understand. The first one is Yama. Second one is Niyama. Then comes to, the, after Yama, Niyama, then comes to be the, the other one is Asana. Then that is all physical asanas. The yogic asanas, what we, everybody practice in a day to day, right? For a physical, as a, in the form of physical exercise, they practice. It's called Asana. Then pranayama, then pratyahara, then dharana, then dhyana. After that, finally comes to samadhi sthiti. That is an enlightenment state. Friends, now let's understand. So here, yama nema. What are yama nema? Yama nema are they are the conditions and principles of life. So one must follow yama nema. You know what is yama nema? If you if you try to understand yama nema, when you try to achieve, so what will happen is in olden days. So from centuries, what's happening is everybody is following these eight steps in this manner. Yama Nema, in order to achieve, one, one, one has to go through a strenuous, that means very hard way of practices in your life. It is not possible, my dear friends. What is Yama, Yama defines? Yama defines, Yama defines Satyam, Brahmacharyam, so Asthayam, Aparigraham, Aparigraham. So all these, these are the five steps are there. Okay. When you say these five steps, my dear friends, part of part of your yama, there are five steps. Okay. And in yama also, there are again five steps. So, so, so santosham is there, saucham is there, and uh, uh, tapaha, iswar, paridana, swadhyaya. Those are the uh, five steps of the niyama. So now you see these yama, niyama, how difficult they are to achieve. For example, a common man, in order to achieve yama and yama, he takes lives together, my dear friends. It's not possible. Let's say you take yama. Part of yama, what are the five steps? There are five steps. Okay. So, satyam, brahmacharyam, ahimsa, asteyam, aparidraham. So, these are the five steps. Whenever I say satyam, right? So, if I want to speak only truth. So, that means if I am able to speak the truth, right? If I am able to live with the truth, okay? So that means satya, part of yama is the first. So what everybody, what yogic practices keep on following from centuries is, first you have to achieve the yama, next you have to achieve the nema. So after, afterwards you have to go to asana, afterwards you have to go to the pranayama. This is the order. But 
is highly difficult to achieve yama nema in the beginning without without the uh, you know like uh, being sent to uh, in the olden days what happened so all the kids you know the child children were sent to the gurukula so in the gurukula they were living up to to almost like you know 20 years they were living in the gurukula there what happens they used to give strenuous practices odd practices all of all the children go through that, that hard practices where yama nema were taught very nicely and they were kept in the gurukula ashram then they were practicing so that that particular time this yama is possible nema is possible right very much to very much possible to achieve that but in the current days current modern days my dear friends is highly difficult in order to achieve this uh, yama nema in the beginning itself that is why many people are telling you know this yoga is not for me this uh, whatever meditation yoga is not for me highly difficult to achieve this yama nema so then they drop off so then they drop off in the beginning itself imagine right yama yama means satyam brahmacharyam ahimsa asteyam aparigraham what is what is satyam i have to speak only truth what is brahmacharyam i have to be always in the soul conscious state i have to brahmacharyam is not sanyasa don't get confused brahmacharya and sanyasa both are different brahmacharya means brahma pracharyam that means in the brahma consciousness in the soul consciousness i have to be always in the soul consciousness isn't it then ahimsa i should not do any uh, any violence on anything so no verbal violence no mental violence no physical violence okay i have to i should have i should be completely non violent person right so then comes to asteyam aparigraha aste means non stealing so i mean like like taking the other people's you know any properties anything stealing basically you are taking to your position aparigraham aparigraham means live with what you have satisfactory with, with a great satisfaction so these are the five steps my dear friends if you achieve these five steps why do i not why do i need to do meditation why do i need to yoga first of all i don't need to do any meditation i already achieve i already have this yama isn't it so that is why it is very very difficult to achieve this then comes to the vinayama uh, niyama niyama yama niyama both are principles and you know regulations of the life in a practical life these are principles and regulations are defined by the patanjali ashtanga yoga so then niyama when you come to the niyama what happens is saucham santosham ishwar pranidhanam swadhyayam see all these steps again there saucham means saucham means swachchata that means so always clean clean be clean where to be clean inside and outside my dear friends so i have no impurities inside i have no impurities on outside many people what they think is so saucham means saucham means a cleanliness what they think cleanliness means cleanliness means outside no cleanliness means in your own mind your mind must be empty your mind must be mind must be empty within within you all the arshad vargas they must be purified they must be purified what are the arshad vargas kama krodha loba moha mada acharya so this arshad vargas must be cleaned it must be purified then you are inside you are clean person you are, your soul is purified your soul consciousness is pure now okay that's all saucha santosham that means i have to be always happy i have to be in the bliss okay not even happiness i want to be in the bliss always is it possible without any practice of yoga so called meditation all these things so now in the part of ashtanga ashtanga patanjali ashtanga yoga so that is why keeping these two in the beginning is going to be a hurdle for many people to practice yoga that is especially patanjali ashtanga yoga that is why friends as per psc's perspective as per our brahmarshi patri ji or guru ji has defined this in a different manner so we rearranged all these eight steps what are the eight steps asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi then yama and niyam please note on this point okay these are the eight steps we have rearranged these steps my dear friends so what is the, what what exactly we have done is first is asana then comes to pranayama then comes to pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi yama niyama see by following these first six six steps my dear friends first six step asana to samadhi when you achieve these six six steps when you practice these six steps yama na yama and nema they are default they are by default they'll come isn't it see when when i get enlightened when when i get enlightened what do i speak i speak only truth what do i follow i feel, I, sp- i follow the only non violence so what do i do i i do, do always i'll be in the brahmacharya i do uh, follow the asteya aparigraham all these are all these are possible after after your enlightenment not before enlightenment 
That is why in order to make a common man, that is why in PSSM, author foundation, whatever we conduct, even the common people will come and participate in our programs, right? Because we, we teach you simple meditation and we teach you the spiritual wisdom in a very plain way. That means, so not, not, even, uh, not even giving a scope to get any small doubts also. Such a way we teach. That is why all the common people also get attracted, get, you know, get interested, get the interest, you know, in participating the so-called the yoga tattva, so-called the philosophy of yoga or the, the yoga sadhana, yoga marga. Many people come and join here. So that is why we rearrange these six, you know, six steps is first. The last two, two steps are their default. By default, they, they will be achieved. A person who got enlightened, yama, nema, or by default, they are achieved. Now, let's start with the asana. What is asana, my dear friends? Now, see, the first step as per PSSM perspective, the Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, asana. Let's understand what is asana. Friends, asana means whenever I teach meditation to you, all the time I used to teach, I used to tell you, sukha, sthira sukha asana. I used to say, sthira sukha asana. What is the meaning of sthira sukha asana? I sit comfortably, back erected, and I cross, I, you know, I uh, cross my fingers, I cross my legs, isn't it? And I, I sit comfortably, I close my eyes. Now, so I am totally sthira sukha asana. That means my asana is so comfortable. Do not get confused in this age as ashtanga yoga. Asana means physical exercises. Try to, try to understand. Physical exercises are meant for the your physical fitness. You can practice any number of asanas. So many asanas are there. You practice for the sake of your muscle, muscle stretching and uh, the stress and strain which is there in the muscles to be released. You practice the yoga asanas that is separate. That is a physical fitness. But with here what we are teaching, what we are talking about asana, part of Ashtanga Yoga is not meant for that, my dear friends. So here asana means sthira sukha asana. What happens now? In our meditation, we sit you know, comfortably in the sthira sukha asana. That is called asana, right? You see, first of all, whoever, whoever is able to sit for a long time in a, you know, at least, you know, sitting in this asana, in this particular posture, itself is a great achievement for you, my dear friends. Many of, many of, we, we keep, we keep telling every class, so sit in the sura, sthira sukha asana. Many people, they'll be, you know, they'll be going this side, that side, they'll be moving. They're not able to sit for one hour. See, without you sit for one hour, two hours, let me tell you, you can't cleanse your mind. You can't cleanse your manamaya kosha. It's not possible. So that is why the yoga, especially the yoga means so-called, the, the, the practice of yoga, sitting in the sukha, sukha asana. So what we teach you? Sukhasana. Sukhasana means no more Padmasana, no more any other difficult asanas, my dear friends. Sit comfortably, normal, you know, comfortable Sukhasana and close your eyes and then make your body stable. Make your body stable. This is called asana. Okay? So, hope you understood. This is Sthira Sukha Asana. Everybody has to achieve the asana see, sthiti. Asana sthiti, everybody has to achieve. The part of this Ashtanga Yoga, I am telling you, I am trying to cover one one point now. Okay. Now, so after the after you achieve the sthira sukhasana, you are able to close your eyes, you are able to sit for without shaking, without shaking your body, without opening your eyes, comfortably you are sitting in this in this posture of asana for almost one hour, two hours. Of course, you are, you got the great achievement, my dear friends. Now let's go to the pranayama, friends. So what is pranayama? Pranayama means I I, I keep telling the the all the classes. So when I'm teaching meditation, basic meditation, how to practice, I used to tell uh, pranayama means here, the second step pranayama in the path, path of, path of Ashtanga, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, second step pranayama refers to sthira, sukamaya pranayama, sukamaya pranayama. So try to understand sukamaya pranayama. What is sukamaya pranayama? So what I do, I close the eyes, the asana sthiti, and then I start observing my natural breath growing in, coming out, going in, coming out. So in breath and out breath, I keep observing. I don't do any kind of a the breathing exercises, my dear friends. Pranayama, don't get confused with the breathing exercises here. In the part of this Ashtanga Yoga, Pranayama refers to Sukhaimaya Pranayama. That means I sitting quietly, comfortably, closed eyes with the closed eyes. I'm just observing my the normal breath which is going and coming. That's called Sukama Sukhaimaya Pranayama. This is called Sukhaimaya Pranayama. What is the normal pranayama? So you have to take the breathing fast and you know, leave fast, take fast. So those are called breathing exercises. 
It is also called pranayama, but they are breathing exercises. What for they are meant? They are meant for cleansing your respiratory system. Okay. So that is different thing, my dear friends. Okay. That is for your physical health. You will do it. That you can do separately. Okay. Right. So with the, with the open eyes also, you can do the pranayama. But here, seek a Sukamaya Pranayama, what you are doing, that's the second step, Pranayama. You are sitting comfortably, observing the breath. When you are observing the breath, slowly, slowly, your mind, your thoughts will get, you know, your thoughts will get empty. Your number of thoughts will be keep reducing, my dear friends. By, keep, by observing the breath, that is the Sukamaya Pranayama you are doing, continuously for hour, one hour, two hours you are doing, then your all thoughts will be going out. Uh, total, slowly, slowly, your mind becomes empty. Now, in this state, you are called as a dhyani, dhyana apyasi. Try to understand, you are a dhyani, you are called as a dhyani right now. Okay, now let's move. Now, what happened? We are keep observing and you know what will happen now? So, when my mind is getting slowly, slowly empty, my thoughts are getting slowly, slowly reduced, I feel some peaceful, peace, you know, I feel some empty state of mind. I feel the lot of sunyasthiti in my mind. So, all this, this experience happening. Okay, that's why you are called as a practitioner, beginning practitioner, you are, a, you are called as a meditator, you are called as a dhyani. Now, let's go to the third step. What is the third step, my dear friends? After the pranayama comes pratyahara. Okay, what is pratyahara? See, friends, in the in the pranayama sthiti, in the in the pranayama sthiti, you are observing your, you know, you are observing your breath, you are making your mind empty. I told in the previous yesterday also, when when my mind becomes empty, I I get lot of you know cosmic energy entering into my uh, into my body through brahmarandra. The cosmic energy will be entering inside. So when the cosmic energy entering inside, so my dear friends. So after after pranayama pratyahara. So pratyahara means pratya plus ahara. What is that? Pratya plus ahara. That means pratya means opposite. Ahara means food. Opposite food. So what is opposite food? What is the direct food? You see, whenever we are with the open eyes, all our five senses will be collecting a lot of information, isn't it? So for all our senses, all five senses, what is the food? The outer world. Outer world feel the information always to the eyes, to the ears, to the nose. You like now, so to the mouth, everything outer the outer world is going to feed a lot of information. That is the external food. Now, what is the internal food? What is the opposite food which we are going to receive in when you enter into the pratyahara state? Friends, now in the you are in the pranayama, you are practicing meditation, you are receiving a lot of cosmic energy, your mind has become empty. In the pranayama state almost maybe it takes more time, one month, two months, or one year, two years, one life, another life, whatever it may be. Right, basing on your practice, it may take right. So now, when you become, when you are receiving huge cosmic energy, what is happening is you started seeing some kind of a, you no know, inner, inner some kind of a colors, some images, like you know, some colors are you are know, seeing different colors, the different images within you, right, within you. Those inner experiences have started happening. Okay, so those that particular, you know, the experiences. See, from outside, if, if, I, if I keep my eyes open, I can see a lot of visions, isn't, isn't it? So, a lot of images, a lot of uh, pictures, a lot of uh, things I can see, isn't it? So, that is the food for my eyes, isn't it? Same way, when I, now I close my eyes, I have no vision right now, but I'm able to see something inside. Something inside is, no, I'm able to see some colors, some, some pictures, some images that I'm able to see, right? That is the state we enter into when you are deep, when you are deepening meditation. So pranayama, you are continuing. You are continuing observation of the breath. Your your mind became empty. You got a lot of cosmic energy inside. Then you started seeing some colors. You started seeing some images, my dear friends. So when you started seeing some images, what will happen? That is called the pratyahara. That means opposite food. You are getting some food from inside. That is called inner food, my dear friends. So that is called pratyahara. Now you are in the pratyahara state, right? Isn't it? You are in the pratyahara state. You are called as a yogi. You are called as a dhyani yogi. You became a yogi now. Okay. Now, friends, so after you became a yogi through pratyahara, you are seeing, you are receiving a lot of insight, you know, inner, inner experiences. You are receiving the opposite food that's called the inner food that's called pratyahara. Now you enter into the after pratyahara dharana. What will be happening? Now, still you are in the meditation state. Okay. What you are doing, whatever that uh, images, experience happening, I am keep focusing on that. I am keep focusing on that. See friends, in the outside mark, in the outside society, many of the organizations they teach what is dharana means focusing on light, focusing on object, focusing on something else. You know, that's what they teach. But it is not truth. That's not correct way. Friends, so now I am in the deep meditation. 
I am receiving lot of cosmic energy after pranayama. In the pratyahara, I am receiving lot of uh, you no. Know, I am I am I am seeing the inner images. I am receiving. I am seeing lot of colors. All this, you no, know, that I am keep on observing now. I am keep on focusing on them, isn't it? I am keep on focusing. That my cosmic energy is still going on. So then, what will happen? I enter into the state called dharana sthiti, dharana state, my dear friends. Okay. So this is called dharana state. So when I enter into the dharana state, so I am called as a I am called as a rishi. Okay. What is called as a rishi? Okay. So why we are called as a rishi? It means friends. So in the dharana sthiti, what happened? I'll be getting lot of cosmic energy. I'm focusing on all the inner experiences. Then what will happen? My entire etheric body, my entire energy body, body will be getting cleansed. What will happen? My entire energy body go on getting cleansed. In the energy body, there are a lot of previous life karmas. They are in the form of patches, energy patches. All that will be getting cleansed. It's called nadi suti. Nadi suti will keep on and keep on happening. Right in the dharana sthiti, when I am dharana sthiti, my nadi sthiti will be tremendously happening. All the karmas will be wiped out. Then I become a karmaless person. It means I become a purified person. My soul will be completely purified. So I become a totally the karma. I I go out of the karmic cycle, my dear friends. So in the dharana sthiti, this will happen. This will happen to you. That is why you are called as a rishi. First is a dhyani, then yogi. Then you are called as a rishi now. Okay, now this is happening continuously, my dear friends. My nadi mandala, nadi mandala, that is etheric body, pranamaya kosha, kanti sharira. This is complete. Once that is completely cleansed, what happen? I I enter into default. Default I enter into the state called meditation. What is that said? Dhyana. So friends, dhyana is not the thing which you are going to do. Many times we use the word do meditation, practice meditation, right? We use a generic word. It's a generic word. But try to understand today very clearly. Meditation is not something doing. Meditation is not meditation is not the one which you are going to do anything here. Meditation is going to happen. Okay, meditation is going to happen. That is your state. Whenever you reach the dharana state, at the at the end of the at the climax of at the peak point of dharana state. You enter into the state called dhyana. What is dhyana, my dear friends? Once that means you are you are still deep. You are going through the deep meditation after the dharana state. You are still continuing your meditation. You enter into the you enter into the state called dhyana. What is dhyana? The word meaning of dhyana is deep plus dhyana. Friends, in the once you enter into the dhyana state, that means dhyana state or meditation. Is the one which happens by default, which you are not going to do something. This is not a task to do. This is something which is going to happen by default. Okay. Now it happened after dharana. You got the state called state called dhyana or meditation. This is deep lasyana. At this state, you are called as a rajasi. What you are called as a rajasi, friends. Now what happened in the dhyana state? So I once my nadi mandala sthiti happened completely in dharana state. Then when I enter into the dhyana state, the that is meditation state. What happens is my third eye gets activated. What happened? My third eye gets activated. One other thing what happens is my inner, you know, my astral body gets released. Why? So my astral guide, my astral body also gets released out of me. Then I can make a journey to the outer other worlds, other high frequency worlds, purtha lokas, my dear friends. So exactly to tell you, friends, we are not the only physical body. Try to understand. We are the combination of seven bodies. Every soul consciousness departed from the our our own father, our supreme power, or the paripurnatma, or the almighty. We depart from there as a so a small individual soul or a child soul, right? We depart from the we take the birth out of paripurnatma. We take a birth as a child soul. We enter into the physical planet and we start our physical lives. So, friends, in that case, the soul consciousness, individual soul, will will come down with the amount of number of bodies around the around the soul is seven bodies. Okay, all the seven bodies will be there, not one body. What are the seven bodies, my dear friends? The human being is a combination of seven bodies along with the soul consciousness. Soul consciousness is the the energy consciousness which is pure in nature. So, with which with which around the soul consciousness we have seven bodies. Human being is a combination of seven bodies. Always remember: physical body, physical body, etheric body, astral body, causal body, supra causal body. So then, cosmic body, then nirvanic body. 
these are the seven bodies my dear friends okay now so what i'm trying to why i'm trying to mention here is try to understand the first bodies first first three bodies we try to understand okay what are those three three bodies all those bodies are within us okay try to understand seven bodies are within us like you know seven chakras seven bodies also within us okay so the first body which is appearing to us here anamaya kosha it's called physical body okay so next body very close to our physical body is called that is called etheric body etheric body or a pranamaya kosha my dear friends okay now so once pranamaya kosha is completely cleansed in the state of uh, dharana we enter into the dhyana state now so once we enter into the dhyana state what will happen is so within us so i already, already told you our you know along with us along with the physical body and etheric body there is one more body called astral body the other body is called causal body so these astral body and causal body togetherly they leave your physical body they travel to the other worlds that's how so we can communicate with all other great masters in the universe my dear friends we can go and you know visit all the great masters we can talk to them we can communicate to them everything happens in the dhyana state that's why d plus yana what is d d means combination of your astral body and astral body combination of your astral body and causal body d is equal to astral body and the causal body yana means what prayana that means journey okay now so when you enter into the dhyana sthiti or meditation state your astral body and causal body togetherly they leave your physical body when they are leaving what happened between the astral body and physical body there is some some one connection will be there always the connection is called silver cord okay so the silver cord will be extending and then this astral body causal body will be leaving the physical body go across the entire universe go go and roam inside the all universe and go into the many many of the other high frequency worlds you know the different worlds different lokas they go and they try to learn uh, the much more higher wisdom they communicate with the great masters all that will be happening so this is called dhyana sthiti my dear friends okay now in the dhyana sthiti in the dhyana state we became rajarshi now what we became rajarshi okay now this is a step my dear friends if you are still continuing now by this state by the by the state of your dhyana state what happened you understood yourself that you are not this physical body you are beyond the physical body you are you have something else inside so far what happened all medical doctors say you are a physical body you are a organs you are a blood you are a flesh you are a bones isn't it so what we are not that we are not only that okay we are that but we are not only that what we are we are way beyond, way beyond this physical body we are also mind not only mind we are not only mind even we are not the actual mind we are not beyond, beyond the mind we are the intellect not only the intellect we are not the physical body we are not the mind we are not the we are not the intellect we are something beyond that that is pure chaitanya atma chaitanya padartha our soul consciousness or the soul or atma my dear friends we are the real we are the atmic we are atmic consciousness we are the soul consciousness that is our true form when do you understand this in the dhyana sthiti in the dhyana state you understood clearly now once you understood this then you will be practicing continuously again you know your meditation is continuing still continuing right years together months together you are going on right if at all your past life is your in the past life you have done lot of meditation friends what will happen is all these states what i am te- teaching you it may happen in a week time some people may get within a week some people may get in the months some people may, may not get anything in this entire life so it is not guaranteed all depends upon your purva janma samskara right now so coming to the dhyana state we achieved all this thing we know now we know our true self i got self realization this is the state of dhyana at the at the climax point of dhyana sthiti is called i i got realized i got enlightened self enlightenment i got it i understood now who am i i got the answer who am i where from i come so what is my true form what is my true reality okay everything i understood now now if you continue doing the meditation you will you will also understand one thing so here what you understood aham brahmasmi i am that brahma padartha i am i am that atmic consciousness you understood aham brahmasmi that is over okay at the end of dhyana now if you continue doing meditation further more and more going deeper and deeper you know deeper into consciousness state what will happen is what you what you will try to achieve is you also try to understand the same atmic consciousness is everywhere means it is in, it is in you it is in that it is in everywhere around me everywhere the same atmic consciousness is there i am not different from them 
I am so I am no way different from the other person. I am no way different from my mother, my father, my children. The my children is having the same soul consciousness. I am also having the same consciousness, same soul consciousness. In fact, all the plants kingdom, all the mineral kingdom, all the animal kingdom, everyone is having the same soul consciousness. We will come to that understanding. So that is called the what is that is exactly called is Satatva Masi Sveta Ketu Manatma Sarva Bhutatma. It means Manatma Sarva Bhutatma means whatever Atma is there within me, in all the Bhutas, in all the all the other light beings also have the same Atmic consciousness. So this is the highest state of you know highest state of enlightenment, my dear masters. So this is the next next state of enlightenment. So that is why that is when so friends. That is when what happens slowly, slowly you enter into the you enter into the sixth state of uh, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga that is called Samadhi. Now, when you when you know about other when you know about your surroundings, when you know about uh, the entire universe, now you are now trying to understand the mysteries of universe. You are trying to understand the secret of life. Okay, you are able to get so many answers now. Who who am I understood? Who are all other beings understood? You both are understood. What happened? There are no mysteries left over. All the mysteries you understood now, all the secrets of the secrets of the life you understood. Now you got the state, you got the state of you, you know, your state of mind, you know, entered into the state called Samadhi Stiti. What is Samadhi Stiti? Many people are confused. Samadhi means the Jiva Samadhi or you know the other Samadhi, a, a graveyard or something. No, Samadhi Stiti means Samadhana Stiti. You got answers for all your questions, my dear friends. What you got? You got all the answers for all your questions, right? So samad samadhi stiti is called samadhana stiti. You got answers for all your questions. What were your questions? Who am I? Who are all these people? Who are all around me? Who is my child? Who is my wife? Why why is she born with me? Why why am you know I'm married to her? Why why my child is born to me? What is the what is the karmic relations between these two people? Okay, why I am suffering with some difficulties so far? Before entering into Padanjali Ashtanga Yoga, before the starting meditation, what what I was suffering? I was suffering with the great difficulties. I was not knowing the not knowing the answers. So all of a sudden, I got into many diseases so because of, I got dreadful diseases, my dear friends. So I used to get dreadful diseases, isn't it? So I used to suffer. I used to suffer a lot. So all these things were happening. So why this? Why these things were happening? Right. So try to understand. So all this was happening, and before entering into samadhi stiti, I was having all these questions in my mind. They were haunting my mind. In fact, they were bothering me. I'm not able to understand anything about my own life and about others, about the entire universe. I have no answer at that time. Now, when I entered into the samadhi stiti, I got answers for myself for all the questions, my dear friends. Now again, samadhi stiti is divided into two types now. Okay, one is sarvika, nirvika, nirvikalpa samadhi, savikalpa samadhi. What is savikalpa samadhi, my dear friends? What is nirvikalpa samadhi? Right, savikalpa samadhi means I got answers for all my questions with the with the practice of my meditation. I got enlightened. I got all the answers. See, entire Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga first six steps, first five steps, first five steps is exactly equal to anapanasati meditation. Please note this point. Okay. The first five steps of this Padanga Ashtanga Yoga is equal to Anapanasati meditation, which I taught you yesterday, which you are, you are keep practicing every day. Friends, that is what you need to understand. Now, so in the Samadhi Stiti, so one thing called Savikalpa Samadhi. What is Savikalpa Samadhi means? I got answers for all my questions, but few questions are left. Few questions are left over. What are those few questions? Like this. For example, my mother is passed away in the previous year. And now in my Samadhi Stiti, I have seen her. Where in which loka she is there? I communicated with her. In which loka she is there? And so I able to I am able to see her. I mean I am able to see that she is very happily enjoying in the other world. I am able to see with my third eye. I am able to see. I am able to communicate with her. But what happens is I don't know what is her next life. What is going to be her next journey of life? What is going where she is going to born? All this I don't know. Right. So few questions are not answered. Few questions are not answered. That state of mind, that state of stiti is called savikal, Savikalpa Samadhi. Savikalpa Samadhi. Now, coming to the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So, if you keep practicing, you become, you know, more and more, you know, you are entering into a deeper, deeper consciousness state and still you are continuing meditation. With a great amount of meditation, what will happen is ultimately you reach to the state, climax state, 
that the pinnacle of the you know the yoga state that is called nirvikalpa samadhi my dear friends nirvikalpa samadhi that is where zero questions zero questions all answers from where you get all these answers from your inside from your inside not from outside okay so what swami vivekananda said the world universe is within you you don't need to search anything outside everything is there available within you do not search everything on outside and waste your time that's what swami vivekananda says that is why my dear friends so now i am fully enlightened i am a, i became a infinite soul now i became a liberated soul by the end of the nirvikalpa samadhi i became a infinite soul i became i became one i, I became one with the entire cosmos i became one with the entire cosmos cosmos i got nirvana i got parinirvana i got mahane maha parinirvana also i achieved i became like a buddha i became a buddha buddha is na no, like uh, our gautam our gautam siddhartha became a buddha i also became a gautam buddha so by the time of you know the sama nirvikalpa nirvikalpa samadhi from then then after i don't need to come back to the earth planet i don't need to come back to the earth planet i finish my all learnings on this earth planet once i get, once i get the nirvikalpa samadhi i'm not going to come back i'm not going to come back to the earth planet anymore no more lives my dear friends no more karmic cycle your karmic cycle ended that means your reincarnation ended so that means birth cycle of birth and de cycle of birth and death so that you came out of that and you are beyond that and no, then now you became one with the cosmos you became one with the existence you became one with the paripurnatma then you became a creator you became a creator you directly reached to the something called satya loka there are seven lokas my dear friends upper worlds so in seven all the seven world bhoo loka bhoo loka suvar loka jana loka karn loka tapo loka maha loka maha loka tapo loka satya loka so likewise seven worlds are there in that anybody who got nirvikalpa samadhi he directly go to satya loka he has no more birth at all so this this how the entire patanjali ashtanga yoga in order to define the entire spiritual spiritual science is completely explained in the six first six steps my dear friends now once i got enlightened i became a perfect i i became a perfect like you know the perfect human being i became a the excellent you know the the master i became a master master of my life so what is the use of what is the use of this dhyana shastra adhyatmika shastra three advantages when you achieve the enlightenment what do you achieve three things you achieve one is you become a you, be, you get the maitri you become a friend to the entire entire beings my dear friends what are the achievements of and after enlightenment what happens after enlightenment that means enlightenment or this adhyatmika shastra or patanjali yoga shastra the, the three three achievements will be there three benefits are going to be achieved the first is we become maitri we become a friend to everyone we become a friend to not only human beings we become a friend to the animal beings plant beings mental beings everything all the other life beings we become a friend the second one is we become a master of our life become a master of our life the third one is we also we get the self realization these things are these three things will be achieved because of the patanjali ashtanga yoga that's what we discuss so far my dear friends now once i became a master of my life what will happen all my arisad vargas kama krodha lova moha mada matsarya so all these are under my control very well very very well control right so they are all under my control then what will happen my yama and niyama became so simple i have no i have no bothers at all right what is yama yama defines like uh, satyam brahmacharyam ahimsa astheyam aparigraham can i not follow all these things so once i become enlightened master whatever i speak whatever the word i what whatever the word i speak it will be as per the truth whatever the word i speak it becomes the truth for example sridhi sai what sridhi sai is to say so is to say one thing the rain will come now and your problem will be solved all the diseases will go he is to give words so they become so powerful because once you became a master of your life once you get an enlightenment you got samadhi sthiti what will happen one every word you utter every word comes up your mouth it is a so powerful words my friends it is going to be satya that means it is going to be truth it is going to be definitely become truth okay that is why that is called satya so that means satya you achieve then ahimsa what is the meaning of ahimsa because you know that you are whatever the consciousness within you it is everywhere then how do you kill an animal to eat 
many people you know many people with the lower consciousness people what do they do they kill the animal for the taste for the taste buds of your you know, your own tongue just you are killing animal and eating the flesh you know eating the non vegetarian that is a pure violence they are they are resorting to violence my dear friends on the all the animal kind okay animal kingdom so that's how that will be you will be coming out of that then brahmacharyam what is the third step in the yama brahmacharyam that means you are you are moving always with the atmic consciousness within you you are moving with the only soul consciousness you have no body consciousness you have no mind consciousness you are you are nothing to you are not you are not going to bother about your body mind and intellect these three are you know these three things you have to forget when you reach to the state of you know the samadhi sthiti these things are no more important to you you are not under the control of these three you are beyond this my dear friends you are always in the living you are always living in the atmic consciousness it's called brahmacharyam okay now comes to asteyam asteyam no no more asteyam i don't need anybody's property i don't need to steal anything i have no requirement at all i became a master of my life i have very much control on us aparigraha so i am very very much happy with the limited resources what i have i have i am very much happy i don't need any more whatever i have i am very happy with that so that kind of life i will be leading as a master of my life okay then comes to uh, then comes to niyama the part of niyama what are those niyama saucham santosham swadhyayam swadhyayam tapaha and ishwar panidana isn't it Sa- saucham saucham means i'll be clean yes i am i became a master all my inside all my inside my uh, all the archan vargas are clean i am a balanced person i am a great master of my mind master of my mind i became a master of my life so archan vargas are not going to bother me archan vargas not going to bother bother me at all so i am a clean inside i am a clean inside that's called saucham santosham because i am enlightened person i know everything now so i will be always in a blissful state that's called santosham then comes to tapaha what is tapaha my dear friend tapaha means reduce what to reduce my sleep is reduced my food intake is reduced my requirements are reduced whatever i have i'll be okay whatever if i don't if, so one day you give me a lot of food the great food i eat next day uh, you are not given you are not given any food you are going to be in a fasting mode yes i'm i'm okay i'm okay for that having not food not having food i have sleep one day good sleep no problem you are no place for sleeping yes no problem so that means once you become a master you are okay with everything you accept everything you accept everything that is called tapaha reduce tapaha means not tapaha means not meditation or tapasu no tapaha means reduce mitigate mitigate that's called tapaha my dear friends so now i enter i i got this master of work now i got the mastery i became i i got the samadhi sthiti then what will happen my tapaha by everything will be all the needs will be reduced my dear friends okay so that's a tapasa then comes to the swadhyaya what is swadhyaya once you got enlightened once you become a once you get the samadhi sthiti take any book to take one bible one one bible or quran or you know bhagavad gita now at this time you can understand so nicely so deeply you can understand now before that you can't understand at all okay so what will happen is you got that you know highly elevated consciousness now you are a, you are an enlightened master you can understand any book you read you can easily understand my dear friends okay that is called swadhyaya okay swadhyaya is always possible a person who got enlightened you can understand anything now with a just glance of a book you can understand everything my dear friends okay that's what they have so then finally ishwar paridhanam what is ishwar paridhanam ishwar paridhanam means so i am always in the consciousness of ishwara that means i i am always uh, you know living with ishwara consciousness so because i got enlightened i'll be living in the ishwara consciousness i will be always you know seeing everywhere the ishwara consciousness within you within that within entire cosmos i'll be only you know living and seeing and visualizing so visiting my own consciousness everywhere pervading so then i have no differentiation between anything to anything so that is called ishwara pranidhanam friends this is the total definition of patanjali ashtanga yoga okay so friends hopefully you got the so all the you know the proper information hopefully you understood the ashtanga patanjali ashtanga yoga so with this so this patanjali ashtanga yoga topic, topic will be closing now so now